2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Great to welcome this vibrant young lady back to our studios, Claire Collins. You've been off for a couple of weeks travelling all over the world. Yes, I went to a fantastic conference in Canada where we shared the results of our research and our students presented and won some awards, so it was really great. Oh, very, very exciting. You had a bit of a, a bit of a hiccup on the way? Oh, the only hiccup was getting back to the airport where I got stuck in a traffic jam for two hours, whole of Trans-Canada Highway blocked oh. and sitting in the traffic going, oh, no, I'm going to make that plane. But uh, fortunately I did, but had a whopping headache by the time I got there. Oh, you beat me to it. I was going to segue into that. You've stolen it. You've stolen it. You've st- Stolen it. Look. Well, it got me interested, though, mm. in, you know, I knew we were, we'd we been stuck in the traffic, no water, unplanned, and it was a tension-type headache, which mm-hmm. is really common. One in two Australians get a headache every year. About one in eight actually get the more severe migraine type. But it got me interested in, well, is there anything in terms of nutrition and fluid in relation to headache? And it turns out there is. So I'm guessing a lot of it is nutrition-based and in terms well, not, of why we're getting Well, not headache? a lot of it, but mm-hmm. there's this fantastic website called called Headache Australia. And on that um, website, one of the key things that stood out to me is that for every headache type, they recommend that you eat better and that can be really hard to do. So I've dived a little bit more into the science. Mm -hmm. But a couple of other good tips from that is if you have a headache that's in association with a change in vision or tingling in your fingers or it's like a bolt out of the out of the blue atypical for your headaches go and see a doctor because it could be something very very serious but let's talk about the common things and so the first thing like i'd been stuck in the traffic hadn't had any water so i knew that that had contributed and there has been a study of drinking water so in a study of regular headache sufferers they got them to try and drink about one and a half liters more of water by carrying around a water bottle and what they found was about a 50% improvement in their perception of their headaches and their headache related quality of life. Now it didn't take away the number or the duration but they seemed to cope better and be less severe. So it's, it's kind of like a good medicine yeah. if, if, you, well, if you're a sufferer. Well I think it's like a good, good reminder have you drunk water because you know what it's like you're really busy and then the other tip to know whether or not you've drunk enough water is the colour of your urine. So your wee should look Mm. like straw, like really pale yellow. Now, the next one where it was really fascinating, the research, is caffeine. Uh Uh-oh. Okay? Now, caffeine Mm. can actually help or add to headaches. One of the... That's very interesting, so it can do both. It can actually do both. Can you believe that if you have your analgesics, so whether that's your Panadol, your ibuprofen, if you have that with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, you get a 50% improvement in pain relief. Not everybody, but for a large group of people, a cup of tea or coffee, and it's the caffeine in it, um, extenuates or adds on, exacerbates the pain relieving effect of pain relievers. Mm. So it can it can actually help now there's this other really weird very unusual type of headache called a hypnic headache that is essentially treated by giving caffeine now it's a sleep onset headache so if you're the sort of person you fall asleep and then you immediately wake wake up with a headache headache 30 minutes later or so then you could be experiencing what's called a hypnic headache and you know it made me think that i wonder if that's why my father-in-law always went to bed with a strong cup of coffee next to his bed and he's not here to ask anymore so talk to your doctor now caffeine the main headache type is i bet you can guess what stress um caffeine withdrawal yeah And the research suggests that one of the things that keeps us drinking caffeine is the caffeine withdrawal headache. So caffeine withdrawal can happen uh, in as short a time as an overnight fast. So if you wake up in the morning and you go, oh, God, I've got a headache, I need a cup of tea or I need a coffee, that's a caffeine withdrawal headache. You're coming down off it and you just have another one and it fixes you in the short term but not really the long term. Yeah, but caffeine is actually good for you and I've written other articles on the conversation so you can read about why you should still drink tea and coffee. But... So the caffeine withdrawal headache is related to what's called a fasting headache. So if you have to go and have a blood test, you're not allowed to have anything to drink, then a fasting headache is probably, in fact, triggered by caffeine withdrawal, except for migraines, where some people get a migraine if they have to fast for anything. And in the research, an overnight snack can help that. Now, the last type of headache is, can you guess? I'm not going to try. You tell me. (laughs) Alcohol-related headache. 
So it is the hangover, mm. but a hangover is produced by a bunch of things. It is produced by the fact that you drank too much, the alcohol cross, crosses the blood brain barrier and triggers inflammation and damages some of your brain cells. Alcohol also sloughs off some of your digestive villi on your gastrointestinal tract, so you're more likely to be dehydrated, get headache. But the last one is things like whiskey and dark coloured um, alcohols, they actually have more of these substances called congeners and they cross the blood-brain barrier and they give you a headache as well. So it's, you know, it's why you're less likely to get a headache with things like vodka. So, okay, so in the most cases, most alcohol still bad, coffee, good. Yeah, in terms of yeah headaches. coffee can be good. You just need to keep it regular so you don't get caffeine withdrawal. Now, the other area of research is, again, there is some studies suggesting that eating more healthy. So, got the article on 2NUR, and you can go to the Healthy Eating Quiz and get some brief feedback on how to eat better to help manage your headaches. Claire will be doing that quiz very, very shortly. Thank you for uh, coming in today, and uh, welcome back to Australia as well. Yeah, thanks. As always, Professor Claire Collins giving us some good advice on 2NURFM 103.7. <laughs>